Greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, <laughs> later in this video, a clearly medicated cookie making Gwen Walls says of her daughter, calls her daughter Hoper Girl Little Pearl. So you have while the, whilst they're making ginger snaps. So, I mean, this is going to be an epic video. It's just like that's the <laughs> that's where this is headed, right? And so the Fetterman interview with um, Joe uh, with uh, Joe Rogan is, I mean, unbelievable. It's you know Fetterman at his worst, and it follows a theme for this whole video and my whole coverage of the election about the degradation of the species. My dogs are barking out there. And you know how there's no solution here. But anyways, this interview is key to that. And Joe Rogan may or may not copyright it. And there's two ways of copywriting something. One, there's three ways. You can give somebody a copyright strike. He's not going to do that. You can copyright it and let somebody use it, but they can't monetize it. Or you can not let them use it at all. You can block the video. So if he doesn't block the video and there's no commercials that means that this has been copyrighted and I can't uh, monetize it, but I'm going to put it up anyway. So this would be a donation-based video if that's the case. If you don't see commercials, that means that I'm basically doing this for free. But the interview is so epic. Like, I, I got I to gotta use what I have if I can here. If not, I'll have to go back and edit it. We'll see what happens. Um, and then, you know. But anyways, if you see the whole complete, you know, if there's, like I said, no commercials and you see big chunks of the interview, you know that it's been uh, demonetized, but I still got to use the clips. And then this would rely on donations to make this, um, you know, a, a profitable video, or at least one that I would get paid for. Anyways, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Here's the next introduction. Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, this is... Sunday, November 3rd, this video I believe will be up on Monday or Tuesday. I have so much content coming out. I am, uh, for the members and who are watching the Journey series, I have two Journey series I'm about to, actually three of them, and some of them are videos I already have up about the whole, you know, the Kamish Patel's son is being indicted by the SEC for fraud of the Medley Pharmacy, which is Kamala's pharmacy, you know, dodgy. So I've made five hours of content. One video is going to be up here. The other one's already up on my backup channel. And I've made all this content. You know, obviously, the election's coming up. My computer's back. It's working better than ever. Apple did a great job. They, uh, they went through the whole, you know, it seems like they've got rid of the glitches. They said they, they only fixed the screen, but maybe the screen was... The problem all along uh, but they seem to think that the system's working fine they said it was going to be five days and they did it in one day i dropped it off friday they had it available saturday morning and so um you know there's just we were traveling and there was all these things i mentioned them in various places in the, in some of these videos and so it's been kind of a tumultuous time for me and you know a lot of things going on but this is going to be a hilarious video because fetterman did a uh, you know, it's almost, I don't know how much it is hilarious as sad, but we're going to play it as funny. He does an interview with Joe Rogan. Hopefully I'll be able to use a big chunk of it because I have a lot of jokes to do. But he's a disaster. <laughs> like just one of my viewers left me a comment saying, I'm five minutes into the Joe Rogan Fetterman interview and I came here to leave a comment saying, you got to cover this. It's a train wreck, right? And, uh, you know, I watched... Fetterman's first response, he can't understand the simplest questions. He has these auto processing issues because of his stroke, but he's had so many other issues. Well, I, I'll just, you know, hopefully I'll be able to use it. Joe Rogan copyright stuff, but hopefully he'll, he won't, and I'll be able to use like a good 10 minutes of it because it's just, you know, that bad. And Gwen Walls, I got five videos of her. She's out on the campaign trail being Gwen. Kamala appeared on Saturday Night Live. Trump threatened to beat up people backstage because his mic didn't work. I mean, it's like... <laughs> like, it's just everyone's unraveling before the election. Um, MSNBC's, you know, making Cardi B as a... Like, like taking her seriously. And just the whole thing. It's like imploding. The whole thing's a joke. And I just want to say about the election. You know, I don't get into 
wishing for things or hoping a certain outcome or whatever, especially for things like this. You know, it's all in God's hands. And, you know, whatever happens, I'll cover it one way or another, especially the funny parts. But one thing, you know, I kind of would like to see, like if I had a, you know, a say in the outcome. And again, I don't, very mildly, it would be that Trump wins, but they steal it from him. Like it's obviously stolen from him. And everybody who's a Trumper and people in the truth community can see that happened. Like they can see the rigging of it and just give up on voting. Like realize that the elections are a joke or Trump just turns on them in such a way that everyone loses faith in the electoral process. And they realize it's all a joke, which Fetterman makes it a joke, which I'll get into, right? Because this is about that. It's a joke. This is not, they're not real people with real power. These are incompetent people. They're real people, but they're incompetent people. They're not real leaders. And the media and all of it is run by incompetent dopes with low consciousness. And they are appealing to the lowest common denominator. It's gone total WWE. It's no longer, um, you know, it's it's no longer anything that's of substance or anything that's has any value. It's just an absolute facade. It's a sham. It's a deception. And so... If you want change, you're going to have to look elsewhere, preferably inside yourself, you know, changing yourself and realizing that uh, hoping for external change is not going to do anything, right? And so, like, that would be my, you know, it's a, it's kind of a big ask, but, you know, that, that was what I'd like to see, that people realize what some of us already know, that it's a waste of time to vote. There's no, you know, you're not in control of anything. The reason that you get to vote is because they want you to think that you have a say and that you can, in four years, change things on a national level, because you could probably change things on a local level, but most people don't give a shit about their local elections, right? And so um, you, know, you can change things on a national level every four years, and it keeps you from protesting and demonstrating and going ape shit on the government. Like, that's why they let you vote. And when you realize that you, the voting's a joke, the well, people then get angry because they want change and they don't know how to get it. And then, you know, hopefully they'll find a way that will reach up to a higher level of consciousness instead of going into a mob type situation. But that's what they want. I don't know. They want to provoke you. I don't know. We'll see what the outcome is. But I guess the outcome for me, a truthful outcome, would either be that you see, so it's so obviously rigged. Like they make it obvious and they just do it to provoke you you know, all you Trumpers and whatever it is, or that Trump just completely turns on you and you realize that, you know, you don't have a savior. No one's coming to save you and that the whole thing's rigged because Trump's owned just as much as everybody else. You know, the truth would set it. And, you know, because of his catch-up gate and just all of it. But other than that, you know, it's just going to be a shit show. So um, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, um... So I just finished the video. Today's Saturday, whatever it is, November 2nd, 3rd, or whatever. 2nd. And I just finished the video, and I'm uploading it. I would have added these things to it, but I'll start off here. This is going to be a comical video because I've got five Gwen Walls videos to come, and I haven't taken a look at them yet. But Shaq, this says, Shaq gets emotional during his apology to Penny Hardaway. So he's apologizing to Penny Hardaway is reflecting about his time with Penny and how you know Penny got all this money and Shaq got jealous and left but he really liked Penny and he you know whatever and then he says this now I could explain what it really means because I know but I'm not because <laughs> it won't be as funny then you are brother because you know, again, they try to compare those guys. I played with a lot of guys, but it's only a few guys that came in him. I came in him, and you came in him. So, who is this him that you speak of? <laughs> so, like that's like weird, right? And you know, it it mean actually means something else, but to people who like watch basketball. And I've talked about where they say he, I am him or whatever. But the way that he put phrase that was hilarious. But then right after that, I find this video. Your team is very good. So this guy's um, 
Trump is campaigning in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I would say the Greek is a seriously good player. Do you agree? So he means the Greek freak, who's Anis Antetokounmpo, who is from African descent, but his family has lived in Greece for a number of years. And they call him the Greek freak. So and they're not even, they're not doing well. They're having struggles this year. So, like, Trump is completely off base. Like, this is, the audience knows that he's, like, doesn't know what he's talking about. Because they don't call him the Greek, right? That was Jimmy the Greek, who got fired for his own racist theories when I was a kid. Like, he talked about how slave owners would breed the the big buck to the big female slave and they had big thighs and that's why they were good running backs <laughs> I was like watching as a kid I'm like oh we won't be seeing Jim in the Greek next week <laughs> like that was really before canceling but you know it was when Howard Cassell said look at that little monkey run and, and he was gone and I even as a kid I knew like Jimmy the Greek like he had already said maybe a few things and he was a he was a guy who Jimmy the Greek was a guy who was in charge of like the you know talking about betting before they really you know did that like they, they all do that now like Peyton and Eli Manning are you know all these announcers and former players are part of the the betting cabal but Trump doesn't know what he's talking about here and then he gets really goofy and tell me who has more Greek in him the Greek or me I think we have about the same Right? He is so, your team is very good. <laughs> and so, you know, like Trump is just um he's stream of consciousness and he has no filter. And he's gotten older and you know, he says so many goofy things and no one should take anything he says seriously, right? I mean he's basically Joe Biden who's but it's still a little bit more polished. And he hasn't had the kind of mental deterioration that Trump has had. So there's that. Okay. Um, so again, I don't know how much of this I can use. You know, I might have to go out and edit out huge chunks just to make it pass through. Um, but there's so many things to cover here. I watched the first, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes or so. And it's a disaster. It starts off here. We're rolling. What's happening? Nice to meet you. Oh, hey, man, it's, so, it's awesome to be here, man, really. Yeah, like, I got to say hi to my, my son is just so thrilled. He's like, you know, he's 15, and he literally freaked out. He's like, oh, my God, it all, and all of his friends are going to definitely What's be watching, name? too. Yeah. So this guy is a senator, right? Remember, he is a part of the, the most powerful legislative body in the world. And of the two branches of the House, the House and the Senate, he's in the higher branch in a big state of Pennsylvania, a, you know, an important state economically and politically he was the guy in, charge, guy in charge of vote, voting counting the votes the ten, lieutenant governor he became prominent during the the biden uh trump election he became a figure and i was like who is this m enough right and i hope we get more of them <laughs> and, and i got my wish he's probably my favorite politician because as you guys probably know i believe the system's a complete fraud it's just an absolute joke. And Trump, and for his part, and Biden for his part, you know, his senility and his them rigging the election for him and then Kamala Harris, them rigging it for her, you know, it makes it all look like it is a joke. But nobody makes it look more of like a joke than this guy. Because this guy, I don't know what job he could hold. I mean, Joe Biden, like what job would you have? Would you have Joe Biden drive your kids to school in a bus, right? like even when he first started four years ago. And even if you're not a Biden hater, you got to admit the guy's slipping, right? He was slipping back then, even the Democrats. You know, some of us say, no, I'd, I'd, I'd let him drive my kids, really, would you? Or anything. Like, I don't know what Joe Biden could do as a job, right? You saw Trump, he couldn't even work at McDonald's. Like, in real life, these guys can't do, you know, regular people jobs, right? Simplistic jobs. But this guy, I mean, he takes the cake. And so you see right off the bat. Yeah. What's his name? Carl with a K. And I, I, met, a, <laughs> I met a Carl in the lobby, but uh, it's a C. But uh, <laughs> yeah. that's a not. So that's coincidence. 
You have a son named Carl, and Joe Rogan has an employee named Carl. Wow, what a coinkidink. A human, a non-human Carl. Yeah, well, what's up, human Carl? Yeah. Um, so, first of all, are you the only guy that figured out that you don't have to wear suits when you're a senator? Okay, so this is a nice, humorous question. Because I'm sure all the Joe Rogan or most of the Joe Rogan viewers and myself actually maybe applaud or um, sympathize with him wearing what he wears. Like it was never a problem for me, you know, that he wore that clothes. So that's what I wear. Like I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here in shorts and a T-shirt. My dog's in my bed, right? Just completely, you know, slacker, lackadaisical stuff. I don't like suits, never like ties. And so I don't mind that he wore this stuff. Um, you know, I talked about it, joked about it. Yeah, it was fun for me to joke, and it was, it was odd, you know, for him. But, I, you know, I can't criticize him for something that I myself would do. And was, I, of course, I wouldn't be a senator, right? But, I, you know, I don't mind that he did that, right? And Joe Rogan's talking for all the people out there, the slackers, the Joe Roganites, and most of them would agree with that's something that they can identify with this guy. You know, they might hate him because he's a Democrat and a liberal, you know, his typical viewers. But Joe Rogan, this is not a gotcha question, right? And he's looking at his processor. It's a simple question. You know, in a joking manner, light manner, were you the first guy to figure out the suit thing? And now you can talk about the suit thing and you can be self-deprecating, which he's going to be. He's opening up the interview to a nice, you know, certainly not a gotcha question, right? Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Sir? I said, are you the only... <laughs> See, now he's got to say it louder and clearer because he has processing issues. So at first he started to answer. It's like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Like, But he didn't get it. He couldn't understand this simple question. You know, you wore, you didn't wear a suit. You know, what, <laughs> were you the only person to figure out, first person to figure out that you didn't have to wear a suit? Very simple question, right? Like a toddler can answer this only guy that figured out that you don't have to wear suits as a senator oh okay <laughs> yeah no i well i i know it might it seems uh, strange but it's like uh i mean i'm a i'm a i'm a bigger guy and okay so if you're not aware of this like i just and i hope they let me use this joe rogan you know like he he's one of the people that copyrights stuff right not strikes but you know you just can't use it so i have to i'm gonna have to edit some of it out that's gonna be whatever like i said but just so you understand this, I'll leave my pieces in and I'll just do short clips because it's, you know, and then you can go back, watch the beginning, whatever you want to do. Uh, but um, when he was on The View, he explained that he has these tablets and it's a, he has an auto, pro, you know, an audio processing issue is what it's called, where you talk to him and he said he hears people like, on the peanuts, you know, the Charlie Brown cartoons. Wah, 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 wah. So this guy can't understand people, which is kind of his job. You know, his his first job is maybe public speaking. Like you have to be somewhat good at public speaking if you're a politician. You have to give speeches, you have to do interviews, you have to comment on things. And he's horrible at that. Like he's the worst person, worse than Biden by far. And you know, he's weird looking. He's a giant, you know, which none of these things, I mean, all, it's all great for me in my point of view, right? But he's this weird, you know, um, Gru looking, you know, George the Animal Steel Lurch looking, Uncle Fester looking dude, right? And he's odd. He's got a witch of a wife, looks like a witch. And, you know, he doesn't present well, right? He's giant, like six foot four and, you know, obese, weird. I mean, Gru is probably, Gru from the Minions is probably the most accurate, you know, but lots of, lots of guys who are not, you know, he's already got that working against him, his appearance. And so the other thing would be, be able to listen to people because he's got to run meetings. He's got to, you know, decipher what people are saying. And if he's got to bust out a tablet and read what they're saying and he can't have a conversation and he can't process things, which you're going to see here, he can't answer the simplest of questions. He's unfit for most jobs. Like he couldn't work as in a, you know, he couldn't work at McDonald's in the drive through I mean, there's very few jobs that he could work at. And he's no rocket scientist. He's not like he's brilliant. And he's got a multiple emotional issues and he was suicidal. 
And he's going to get into those things. He's got physical health issues. So nobody would hire this guy. Like, he's a walking disaster, right? Like, nobody would hire him. I mean, you know, nobody would hire this guy unless he had some kind of celebrity, you know, status. Like, he'll probably get a job after this. But he doesn't deserve any job because he can't do them, right? Like, he just, he can't. And I don't really can't afford can't, uh, custom anyway. And I hate, uh, I'm claustrophobic and I hate them being in that kind Jesus of... Jesus Christ, is there anything that you don't have? You're claustrophobic too? Okay, so this guy, he's going to get into his health issues, which are, uh, they're worse than I thought. And he almost died. And when he was sworn in as senator, he went into deep depression. Probably because this job has got to be overwhelming for him because everything that he has to do he's not suited for and he has anxiety and you're claustrophobic fucking too so he got depressed and you know he had these health issues he got admitted to the hospital they went to a, a mental you know facility like a, a rehab you know uh you know an outpatient uh, an inpatient mental facility because he was suicidal and so he couldn't do his job because he was suicidal and depressed but he also has all these physical issues and he has like these panic attacks he has auto processing and you're claustrophobic too what what don't you have like what emotional psychological issue don't you have right are you you know when are you coming out and saying that you're going to transition into a woman like what what you know what other things are there that you're going to do that we're not aware of right because the guy has pretty much everything like every you know difficult thing he has right shit and uh i've always dressed like like shit and <laughs> you know and, and i know and, and then that whole thing kind of got away uh of us um uh, people assumed that there was a, a dress code issue there yeah and i'm like no i wasn't behind that behind that but of course everybody you went behind what the dress code issue but he pointed at the at the dude that dresses like a slob, and, and and then the whole the whole nation just had like a meltdown, like oh my god, the Senate's on fire because uh, I dress like a slob. Uh, but but uh, my life is just much better in D.C. That I, I love that he dresses like that because it's great when you see a bunch of guys in expensive suits, right, and one guy who's you know looking like he's the bouncer, or he's a mental patient or something, right which he actually is he's up there in shorts and a, and a hoodie and he sticks out anyway you know when they were giving speeches with biden and he's wearing all this stuff and everyone else has got suits on and he doesn't have them right it's just great and he goes to these meetings and things he's in, in you know these hoodies i love it it's you know it just makes politics that much more of a joke that this guy could be a prominent politician a national politician right a figure who's on the news and he's pretty much a wrecked human being he's broken physically and emotionally and mentally and what he was before he was broken was subpar right <laughs> like he's not smart like he's never been great unless that i'm going to be on the floor that i'm not going to be <laughs> you're never going to see me in a suit and uh, i think that's a more authentic kind of way that i live and I, I don't judge anybody on how they dress or those things. Uh, I, I just dress this way. And there's also practical issues as well, too. Like, I have... I he also, he, that's his go-to-go-to, go -tell, go -tell, uh, go um, you know, glitch where he says, as well, too. And it doesn't make any sense. I have chopstick legs, and I have no ass, and I can't keep pants <laughs> up. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, buddy. What, what, what don't you have? Like, you know. <laughs> and, and and hoodies and hoodies it's like i don't have to iron that shit you know so it, it's just like easy it's comfort and it's like I, I just feel like that's i mean and if somebody judged me and people have said that uh but it's like i'd rather have somebody know and i i promise you a lot of people and dudes especially in western pennsylvania love to wear suits all year i mean uh excuse me shorts all year uh and dress like that but uh, to me it's shorts all year like even the winter it's kind of cold. I mean, it's indoors. Yeah, you know, great. But, you know, like I said, I'm not, it's not a problem for me, but it's like everything else here. This guy's unfit to work. Like, this guy should be institutionalized in some way. Or at least he needs to have care. You know, like he's a mess. It's about comfort and practical. Well, I mean, it makes sense. The, the whole 
dress code thing of wearing suits and you're you're more serious because you have certain clothing on it seems pretty silly uh, I, I, sorry what's that are you so let's, let's he can't understand this joe rogan you know he does good interviews like he's exposing fetterman more by being conversational and being light than anybody else did like his show is better just a better show Again, you know, I know he's the issue. Of, I I said that stuff about him when he kind of sold out the truth community and said a lot of people in the truth community are crazy. He had Alex Jones on, right? And you know, I it's just he's he's Joe. You know, he's part of the beast, right? But in terms of the beast, his show is better, and him being relaxed like this because you couldn't have a more relaxed environment. Joe Rogan sets it up so it's just him. You know, some of his staff who are like, you know, if, if he has people on there with a person, they're, you know, it's a conversation. It's relaxed. There's no audience. They're in some studio. It's it's low stress. And once you start getting into it, he usually eases people in. And he lets them talk, right? He lobs them an easy question, and the people open up. He asks good questions. And for the person, he sets them up for what they want to talk about, right? He gives them a platform to give out their worldview and he has different types of people on and he doesn't you know maybe once in a while he gets confrontational like he did with Sanjay Gupta but for the most part it's very relaxed and he doesn't do gotcha questions if he does them it's like in a bro bro dude kind of way right it's not like you know some um judgmental way it's like dude what do you do what do you do you know like this type of thing right um and so Fetterman can't do it he can't understand. He can't process the simplest questions in a relaxed atmosphere. He's kind of relaxed now. Let's tell everybody what's going on with your iPad. So because you had a stroke, you have oh, yeah. difficulty. The, Do you have difficulty hearing? or? Well, no, I can hear just, I can hear just perfectly right now. Uh, and... Uh, but uh, th there's just the, the one kind of a lingering issue. There's a lingering issue. Um, and, and sometimes I lose just a couple steps on time. And then now... Okay, that steps words. Like he can't explain it. After that, that's the only thing. And thankfully, the stroke never touched my intellect. Thanks. Yeah, okay. But then what's, what are we watching then? Because you can't... You, he has verbal issues. Like he can't express himself. He uses the wrong words. Remember, he came out after, you know, in the debate... Good night, everybody. Like, you know, remember that disastrous debate? I mean, it was worse than Biden's debate. Uh, uh, but the but the stroke nearly killed me. And again, I don't. Uh, but uh, I use captioning in situations just like this uh, in interviews. That's so that's why I can I can really make sure exactly what's being said, uh, and then I can able to just participate. If somebody wears the glasses, it doesn't mean that they're illiterate. It just means they just that's a tool that allows them to participate or drive or those things. And it's that same thing. And a lot of people across America use captioning to watch movies and TV, and that's really no different than that. So it doesn't affect your intellect, but it d does affect your hearing? Is that you already asked this, right? Now, he's talking to him like he's a child. He's talking slower, louder, more direct, and he's saying the things over and over again patiently, Joe Rogan is, just to try to get to understand because the guy can't answer. The guy has a processing issue. And so when you're asked questions and, like, you don't understand the question and you kind of understand the question but then you start talking and you might understand the question for a moment but then you lose it and you start babbling and incoherently and then you're you can't say things in a way that makes sense to other people you can't function as a human being you're a fucking senator though bro like <laughs> That what's going on? Uh, n no, I, I can hear and I can listen to music. The difference with music, for example, is is that as long as there's muscle memory, I, I can I can remember all of those. Wait, things. muscle memory? Do you think your brain is a muscle? <laughs> what's a muscle that listens to music? Kinds of music things, but it seems unlikely at this point that it's uh, they're not going to be any kind of new new favorites. Uh, emerging like that because so you essentially I, I can't, yeah, only I, can listen to the same old music forever yeah no it, it, it's yeah it's it, yeah it, i i mean uh I'll so like um what's that great movie i'll think of the name later but the guy had lost his long-term memory um uh, not invertendo it begins with an i i think 
Uh, but it's a movie where they go from the the future back to the past. And he's looking for this guy, John G., who killed his wife. And everybody's manipulating this guy. And he has to write notes because only remembers... Because he only has a short-term memory, right? Don't tell me you don't care to know. I could look up the movie. Um, I'll do it between breaks or whatever. But that movie, like, he's that guy, right? Like, he can't listen to new music because he can't hear it. So... But if he hears an old song, he has it memorized to some extent. And wait till he tells you the kind of music he listens to because he's he's a metalhead. All of the all the classics like you know Metallica, Motorhead, Motorhead, uh, the Cult, uh, all those kinds of things. Like I haven't lost any of you know the, the Def Def Lep and those things. Well, and I I saw the the uh, the record of White uh, excuse me White Snake, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but all those things. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, I, I think we're both in the fifties, right? And mm -hmm. you know, we grew up with yeah. with the, with the crew and, and the all crew does it. He does the devil horns. So, you know, he's a heavy metal guy with weird tattoos, weird looking. But that music is difficult to listen to. If you have audio processing issues, so he's listening to this music. He can't listen to new music because he's like his brain's cooked. He's he's stuck to pre-stroke settings, right? He can't do he can't understand anything that he doesn't already have in his system, and it's complex and weird. And he's not explaining it very well, right? Like think about like how fucked this guy is. He's a senator and one of the prominent ones. I bet if people were asked to name five senators, if only if they if they had like you know or named all the senators you know, Fetterman would be one of them because he's prominent because of all this stuff, right? And he can't do it. Like it's this guy's not fit for any job. All those kinds of things. So um, uh, some some people might judge me based on my my taste on music, but <laughs> I mean uh, that's that's yeah they will of course they will. Because you're a fifty-year-old dude that still lives into metal, and metal is it's so gross the music. It's you know it's I mean there's a I like a couple of me, like a Metallica songs. There's like a few hard rock songs that I kind of like. You know there's some, but um, you know, it's it's the the it's very violent music, right? It has a as you get older you can't listen to shit like that, right? You just get more sensitive. But this guy's he's scrambled. He's just a fucked up person. Like, he's fucked. Kind of words, Listen, man. people are going to judge you no matter what. You're a big gi yeah. giant guy who wears hoodies and you're a senator. <laughs> like, so like, no matter what, they're going to judge you. Who cares? But uh, Yeah, who cares? Keep on doing you, bro. It it helps me. It helps me epoxy the future. Because I, I like to show you that the political system's a joke. And I'm going to show you not just with this, but with uh, everybody. Just trying to like understand like what what is going on with the captioning because you you can hear, but so there's some sort of a disconnect between hearing and understanding. Like what is it? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a disconnect. It's just it's it's just about being precise okay. on that, just to make sure that. So if you know, if like for an interview, just to make nobody would say you're precise about anything. That's not a word anybody would use to describe you. Like you, if you get it in the ballpark. If somebody asks you a question and the answer is like reasonably conceptually almost kind of like what you should say, then it's like a win. Like nobody wants precision. No one's looking for perfection from you. They just want you in the fucking ballpark. Like they want an answer that has something to do with some of the words of the question you were asked, bro make sure of those things uh so it, it's really just about captioning uh it just it really it's just a tool no difference i mean for this this is like my my eyes uh in the sense for glasses that just right i understand just, it, so it yeah. just gives you a little bit more precision in what you're saying yeah yeah there's no precision there <laughs> fuck <laughs> Yeah, yeah. understanding <laughs> what, what, what was it like running for senator right after recovering from a stroke that had to be a nightmare yeah i, I don't recommend so that. this is great because this shows you how fucked the Democratic Party is. Because if you understand the timing of this, and I kind of was aware of it when it happened, but we didn't know this was going to be the result. Like, we saw he had a stroke. We all thought he should have stepped down. They pushed him through anyway. This is the result, right? Like, it seemed like a bad idea because he wasn't great before the stroke. He was weird. He was, you know, like this, but, you know, not as damaged. But he wasn't great then. He was never great. He was never a great politician. 
he was never someone that you know showed confidence and and cognition and intelligence and he didn't have good verbal uh, he didn't have good uh, verbal skills and so you know he was never good like he was always like this when he first emerged before he he imploded and they kept him anyway and when he let's Let's listen to this here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I don't recommend that. Because you seem to have recovered quite a bit oh. since then. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he, he asked because just the way Joe Rogan asked that question. During that time, you were really struggling. And oh, sure, abs absolutely. Like, uh, it, was, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a rough uh, conversation after that. Um, uh, they, they brought me into the hospital and then I, I went under and then I, I woke up uh, and they... That's how it works. They put you asleep and then you wake up. Okay, so that detail didn't have to be there. Said they, uh, they said, hey, uh, we got it. We got it. We got the clot. The, the clot that, that essentially just but killed me. And I'm like, oh, that's good. Uh, and then just kind of went back under. And... <laughs> And uh, at, at that point, I had no idea where we were at on those things. Uh, and then I had, um, the next morning, I woke up, and then they, uh, a doctor came on. And he had kind of a, a grim kind of a look on his face and things. <laughs> this, and You're going to end up like this, bro. <laughs> this is because this is the outcome of this stroke. My dad was there sitting next to me at the bed, and I was like, well, hey, His doc. dad did, died 10 years ago, just so you guys know. I mean, what's, uh, what things, what do you think? What do you like? Uh, and he's like, well, um, you know, your, your, your heart is functioning at an incredibly low kinds of percentage. Uh, and, uh, and I'm like, well, um, uh, well, well what, do you th what do you think? And, and he was like, well... Uh, you know, I mean, you know, there's, there's some is issues, uh, and I'm like, well, are we talking, you know, maybe a year, a year kind of thing, and and like, mm. uh, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, right? So you're about to run for senator, you're having discussion of a terminal illness because your heart's not working, you just had a stroke, and you had a major blood clot that had to be removed, and you know, beforehand he wasn't great, like he wasn't like you know, he could have any kind of a slippage because he really was, this job was beyond him anyway. You know, and all these scumbags, this is why all these people who do this, they're completely handled. But they're able to go out and pretend they know shit and pretend they care and read speeches and rehearse lines. Not great. I mean, they all suck at it. You know, most of them are just complete, like, bozos. But nothing like this, right? And so he wasn't good at it beforehand. And then they're talking about him being terminal, right? Like he's, he's, you know, obese, he's got bad health, probably bad genetics, and he's in a stressful situation where he's way over his head. He doesn't handle these things well, and his heart's not functioning. Um, and this was all while you were running for Senate? Uh, yeah, yeah, this was, uh, this was after, this was after, this was after, this was uh, three days before the primary. Oh my God. Yeah, I was on so my- three days versus the primary, they had time to take this guy out, right? They had time because they had a primary. They had other candidates. And so this guy, I mean, just had a ma massive stroke. And he wasn't, like I said, he was dope beforehand. But they wanted him so much, just like Joe Biden. They pushed him through. And his health is, this is just the beginning of what he's going to say here. It's much worse than this, right? I was on my way to an event. And, and my wife, Giselle, she, she's like, you're, you're having a stroke because... Uh, she's they a witch. They had that classic kinds of uh, where, you know, half of my face. I didn't know that, but it kind of just... He's an ogre and she's a witch. It's not a good combination. Yeah, you know, just... Slumped. Uh, yeah. And, and, and then they hotlined me over to the hospital. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have survived if we were in a different... I mean, there's parts of Pennsylvania, and that's, a, that's part of the tragic, that uh, if I wasn't close to the, uh, the kinds of hospital that I was, uh, it's 100% that uh, I wouldn't have survived that. Wow. Uh, so the guy should have died, right? You know, he, I mean, he, he could have died. And they had a chance. They could have got rid of him. And it gets worse here. We know how bad it gets, right? This is the outcome. This is the guy they forced through for, they didn't have to do it. They could have said, all right, this guy isn't doing well. He's underperforming. 
let's get somebody else. But for whatever reason, whatever the reason was, they pushed this through when they shouldn't. Somebody said, look, this, you can't do this. And it got me there in enough time, and they were able to, there was an expert there. And, and I, I actually had, I, I met that doctor that's, that literally saved my life. Uh, and, and I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, and he usually wasn't based in that hospital. He was usually out of Delaware, but he happened to Delaware. be there wow. and and that uh and he was here to to give me an, an award for <laughs> what what award are you gonna get you know, be, you know being that kind of a an advocate for those things i'm like no the you an you, advocate for people who can't do their jobs and are mentally incompetent you deserve you deserve the award on that you deserve the award because you saved my life but i'm getting an award it's strange i'm getting an award for barely functioning and and uh that's what, incredibly what, lucky. Yeah, and and then um, and then I, I asked, uh, really looking for like a countdown of like, well, what's the prognosis? And and I really there wasn't much there on that. And I had to like, uh, was I going to sur survive for long, or you know, what's that going to look? And then of course, um, the entire majority on the Senate really was on the middle of that, and that's a big. It's the middle of that. Mean that if he loses, then the Republicans get the Senate. And so, why would you keep this guy in there? We saw how he performed at the debate. I mean, there was no way this guy should have won. I mean, Dr. Oz, how bad does he suck? How much do people dislike him? That somehow in Pennsylvania, they thought this guy was worthy of their vote. Like, he won the, that election. Like, and he, you know, he's, he was way worse in terms of his right off the bat in that debate. Like, that was the worst debate performance in history. And there's probably never... I mean, the guy was incoherent the whole time. He didn't give one intelligible answer. And Joe Biden and his people were like, well, the poll says that we didn't lose any votes. And they were like, even after that debate, right? Of course. Um, the entire majority on the Senate really was on the middle of that. And that's a big responsibility after that. And then, uh, uh, so the, the primary... It happened, and and I actually had a you know, a really strong win, and I won all of 67 counties. Uh, 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 Pennsylvania has 67 counties, and we carried every county: uh, Phil uh, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and all across Pennsylvania. Uh, but at that point, I had a responsibility. It's like, am I able to recover, or where a kind of when I'm, am I going to be okay? And I wouldn't recommend being in that in that situation. But I, I made a, a commitment. Uh, more than anything, I was more worried uh, about being being around uh, to be a dad. I mean, I okay. So think about what he just said there. In the primary, he carried the whole state, every county. And, you know, he was not great beforehand, but he just had this stroke. Like three days before the primary, they voted for him anyway, right? And then they voted for him again after his performance and what it looked like after he had the stroke. And there were multiple people and different entities. There was the Democratic Party that could have said, you got to step down. You're just not fit for office. And, you know, he might die in office and then the governor has to appoint somebody. It's a whole nightmare, right? Like he's, no one knew if he was going to live, never mind be able to serve as senator. And so the Democratic Party could have done the right thing and said, you just can't do this job, right? And a big part of his physical breakdown had to do with stress and being overwhelmed because he wasn't suited for this thing in the first place. We'll get into that as he goes through this. And so... He could have stepped out. The voters could have said, look, this guy is mentally incompetent. He just had a stroke. Let's vote for the other guy. But this is everything I say about democracy, right? They voted for him twice. He won overwhelmingly in the primary, which made them have to choose between him and Oz, right? And so, you know, who was a nightmare in himself. And so they could have replaced him at any point along the trage tra trajectory after the debate as well. I mean, they replaced Joe Biden after the debate, but they kept him in, right? They kept him in. And his family, could his wife been like, you can't do this, you know, you need to be around while you have kids. The number of people, anybody else in his family. There's all these people and entities around him. And the media, the media could say, this guy's unfit. 
we can't do this seriously. But with what they were doing with Joe Biden, ignoring Joe Biden's Parkinson's and his, you know, mental gas and his senility, his you know cognitive issues, this guy was even worse, right? And they, they none of them stood up and did the right thing. This is a breakdown of the system. It's everything. It validates everything I say, because voters, there's no such thing as democracy, because, you know, people who don't have the ability to vote. I mean, democracy doesn't work because people who don't have the ability to assess what's going on, who would vote for this guy? Now, how bad was Dr. Oz where you think that this was a, a better alternative? Or just in general? Like, you, how do you vote at all, right? And so these people in Pennsylvania elected this guy. He's going to be around to 2026, and this is the result. A person who's barely functioning, he could kill over and drop dead at any time. I mean, he's got more doctors and medical interventionists there but he's not in physically good health he's got all kinds of mental issues he was suicidal and depressed and he sucks at every part of his job right and he can't even dress the way they're supposed to dress (laughs) he can't even obey social norms and he's wrong on everything and you know he went after these people he's he's so pro-israel he's one of the worst people and even though his liberal base the people who are you know pushed him over the the, the the top in terms of his election they're turning on him and he just doesn't recognize it right he can't deal with them in a reasonable way he says outlandish stuff because he can't hear and process what's going on around him and they all could have fucking stopped it they all could have said this is a bad idea it's a horrible idea this guy cannot be senator but they did it anyway all these entities the voters the media his family the democratic party all these people in charge, right? And now he's going in the Senate doing this job, making a fucking mockery of it. And I love it because it validates everything I've been saying. And I have three, I have three young kids and my, my wife, you know, she lived through all of this. So at that, at that point, um, uh, uh, it, it started, I was in the hospital for about 10 days. And, yeah, and I start to get better and better. While he, he's won the primary and he's like... They don't know whether he's going to live or die. They, the people almost voted for a corpse. They almost voted for a fucking corpse. Uh, the strength started to come back a little so bit. So this is Pennsylvania, right? Pennsylvania is a swing state, maybe the most important swing state. It has the most electoral votes. If Trump wins Pennsylvania, he'll almost assuredly win the election. And so there's three big swing states that are pickums, that are toss-ups, and Wisconsin and Michigan, Wisconsin and Michigan, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the biggest state, kind of the most prominent one. It's one of the bigger states in the country in terms of electoral votes, in terms of industry and things. And these people voted for this guy. And they hold the fate of American presidency in their hands. Think about that. See, it's how fucked it is, right? It doesn't work. Democracy doesn't work. Stop thinking that it's like this. It doesn't work. And this guy can actually, I mean, he's not destroying the government even though he's like up there because they have, you know, these guys aren't allowed to, to do anything, right? He can't do anything. That's why they can elect him because there's, there's no, he has no real power, right? But I, it was still rough. And it was very, very clear though, that I had a capacity to, it's been impaired on, on hearing and those kinds of interaction and those things. Uh, so. uh, Yeah. So like you can't do your job, right? Like (laughs) who, who green lighted this thing, right? Like, the, you know, the Democratic establishment's talking to his doctors. They're getting this information. Oh, the guy's no longer going to be able to have a conversation. He's not going to be able to answer questions. Oh, then he can't do his job. Let's get the other guy or someone else there. Nope. We can, we'll make it work, right? Like fucking. <laughs> but that's the thing. But, but I had to decide by August 15th, and that's actually, that's my birthday, ironically, that uh, if I, I step down uh, by then or before, then they're going to have to find somebody to replace me on the primary, and that was going to be my drop, uh, my dropout day on that. Drop dead day. So, what was the operation? How did they do it? How did they remove the clot? Uh, uh, well, it, it, it's, uh, I, it's on. I mean, I had to originally. Uh, I had to go back to. I have to learn how to how to talk. And speak uh, uh, you know i went okay so he's not answering the question he asked you how do you remove the clot and he, you're talking about what happened afterwards so he he got none of that right 
to a, a speech therapist and have interaction and those kinds of things. Uh, and my hearing and those kinds of things were still impacted by that. Well, you said it and, wasn't your hearing before. And they had to monitor my heart because it was, uh, it, it effectively uh, stopped. I found out after the fact that it actually stopped. You had cardiac arrest, right? And then uh, that my heart had to recover. So there was two kinds of things working there. You know, my, my heart. And then right before the primary, they walked in and they said, well, here, here's what I suggest. Here's what I suggest. Now, we are going to put a, a pacemaker. We're going to put in a pacemaker. He's got a fucking pacemaker in his heart. And, uh, and we're like, hey, that's, that's the best thing. So they, they put that device right here. And for anyone, if you're not really what that is a pacemaker, but that, that, uh, that manages your heart. You know, because I had a significant issue with AFib, and and that's really what what did that to my heart. So you had a uh, uh, whatever that is, arterial fibrosis, whatever I can't pronounce those fucking things. <laughs> but he has AFib, right? So he has a major medical heart condition that's not getting better. And uh, they put that in, and then uh, that was uh, that was um, that was right before the primary, and they put me under. And uh, I. Uh, so what year was this? Uh, 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 this was uh, 22. 20, 2022. And, and before you had this stroke, had you ever had any issues before with clotting or anything like? Was this like not, a? Not with clotting. Not with clotting. You know, my I have, for good re, for good things and for for bad things, my heart was just like my father's, you know, and he had an issue with. AFib, and he was in the hospital for. So it's a genetic. Yeah, a gen he's got a genetically bad heart. He's one of these guys. You know, some of these big guys they have Marth Marthum syndrome or whatever. You know, I mean, he's his heart's keeping this huge body alive. He has to pump blood to all these extremities, so it's overworking because he's obese. He's you know giant. You know, a lot of these bigger people don't live very long. You know, people who are like giants. I mean, we know this, right? And his dad, whatever his thing was. Um, genetic and uh, uh, but uh, I didn't I, it was never an idea it was never an idea that uh, I was going to even having a stroke that, that wasn't part of the at least my thinking I, I knew that I was in distress you know I could tell that my heart was 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 in problem and I was just going to get through this primary I mean there's a lot running on that mm -hmm. uh, and then that's uh, that it didn't work out because the stroke hit three days before and and then that forced me uh, and that put me on an incredibly different kind of a of a path after that and so <laughs> Jesus you know the guy he goes into the you know doctor's office you know doc uh, give, tell me what's what's going on with my body well you've had a stroke and you've had a massive blood clot and your heart's barely functioning, and you you might not live a year. Jesus, doc, anything else? Well, you know your your liver is um, completely fucked, and your kidneys are bad, and your you know your your blood pressure is horrible because of your heart situation, and it's uh, likely that you have some kind of a lung issue. Jesus, doc, what else? Well, for a man your size, you have a incredibly small penis. <laughs> but doc, doc, what else is, what else is there? Well, you, you also have, like a, um, instead of one of your testicles is actually an ovary, and you have a uterus, and somehow you've impregnated yourself. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, and we're not even getting started on the emotional psychological issues. You think I still could be senator, Doc? You know, like, <laughs> like the guy's just a fucking wreck, right? I mean, he's a poor specimen of a human being. And anybody with this kind of a heart condition, he's going to talk about it here. Let's just show you this part. So where do they go in when they're removing the clot? Do they have to cut your skull open? Like, how do they get it out of there? Uh, they went up, they went up... Uh... Uh, in your vein, in your leg, and they went up in. No, it's not just, your vein. Did he didn't have a he didn't have a clot. You had the clot. It's a remarkable. He went up your vein in your leg. Couple technology that through that, your leg. Yeah, all uh, the way up, up to your brain, and, and they just sucked it out. And they wow. They, they actually did they get anything else with it? <laughs> did anything else come out with the clot? Like any brain matter, frontal lobe stuff? Was there? 
at uh, an, XY, an X-ray or whatever, and you could see that, hey, we got it out. And I actually got to see, uh, although I really was still kind of out of it, but that was the clot that, that all but took, uh, took my life. And uh, so, I mean, there, there were a lot of things there. You know, suddenly your you know, mortality was kind of like put right there in front of it. Yeah. Uh, on, and through that. Um, do they have any idea what caused the clot? Is there, do they understand? This is it here like what happened to you I'm always my, my grandmother uh, had an aneurysm and uh, it was a horrible situation they didn't find her um, for several hours uh, afterwards my grandfather came home and she wasn't in the house and then he found her in the backyard she had collapsed and they gave her 72 hours to live and she lived for 12 years like that and it was horrible my grandfather had to take care of her it was, it was a mess like he had to actually take care of this broken person who would want to do that it was really really rough so i'm, I'm always... aware of like the kind of needy asshole that you are like <laughs> i know what your wife and everybody's going through just trying to to compensate for your lack of ability to function like a real person he's like really concerned with that kind of stuff like i don't like what causes it do they know uh, yeah well it's I, I mean, I had uh, for the first time in my life, and I hope it's the last time that I'm uh, confronted by this idea that the the doctors weren't able to provide any kinds of certainty, or it's like, oh yeah, man, you're going to be okay, or things are going to be okay. That that wasn't. Good, can't answer the question right because he doesn't understand it. Uh, so they and, don't know what caused it. it well, just I mean, it, it was a fib. So he has to ask him twice. And 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 my heart weakened, and the stress of the of the primary and on the ongoing kinds of issues, uh, it was already weakened about that issue earlier, and everything kind of came together, and my I guess my heart deteriorated to the point where that uh, that caused uh, the clot, oh. and then that the clot that's what nearly took. So chunks of his heart, a chunk of his heart deteriorated, and released some of its matter into his blood system that went up to his brain which caused him to have a stroke because he was stressed out because he was running for a position he wasn't physically or mentally emotionally intellectually ready for but they pushed him out to do it anyway it was better to sit in his basement and listen to metallica a guy who's you know gonna die young like this i mean you know he's he's closer to death now right he's not gonna live he's gonna you know it's gonna be under probably die before he's 70 and they pushed him fucking through, right? They pushed this guy fucking through and everybody around him and the media went along with it. I mean, this is not somebody who should be, you get, you know, you quit your job when you're in that situation. If your job's stressing you out, you quit your job and you do a less stressful job or you retire. Like that's what happens when people go to this kind of circumstance, right? You're gonna be a stay-at-home dad. Your wife's gonna have to go out and do something, right? Like that's what happens. That's what Joe Joe Rogan was saying about his his grandmother. Like you know, you're now a patient for the rest of your life, and you're going to under function, and you know, keeping you around as long as possible for the kids or whatever. I mean, I you know, I can't say that's good or not, but that's what you do, right? That's what happens in these situations. But no, they put him in one of the most stressful jobs, where he's constantly going to be scrutinized because and mocked because he can't do his job, right? He, like it's just. He's always going to be like a, you know, a poster boy. They're only going to roll this guy out to for you to lose faith in your government and your whole in democracy and shit like that, right? He's always going to be out there for another two years if he makes it that long. And then there's emotional shit, right? So he ends up being sworn in and he has a panic attack and he has to be admitted into a, you know, mental facility. He has to go into treatment and he's suicidal and he's depressed and he can't do his job for two months <laughs> like this is what they created and this is the outcome here right this is that guy's functioning looking at a, an ipad and not really understanding what's going on around him and then not being able to articulate what's going on inside of him back to the person who asked him a question this is how fucked this thing is right I took my life Whew. so then you have to go to work. So now you are an elected senator, and you have to go to work in the middle of recovery. Yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I, I I think. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's it's so diff. It's 
uh, I had a significant responsibility. Uh, uh, it's like, you know, it's pathetic. Like, all you can feel is this guy mocking, laughing, sure, that's there. But it's like pity. Like, if you know, like, it's just, this is Gollum stuff. Like, we've entered into Gollum. Like, the, you know, I mean, this is the year of the amateur, but the Gollum stuff is also very present, right? Just like so low, so contemptible, so, you know, low consciousness, low vibration. I mean, he can barely function. Like, he's got a fucking senator. To, to, to stay in that and, and winning through all of those things. Uh, and that's, that, was, uh, that was difficult enough. Um, it was an important conversation. And we had to run a campaign. We had to run a campaign. Uh, when I was, it was difficult. Like, his, his mind is not, is all over the place. Like, he's, you know, he can't express himself. He was never good at it. Like, you go back before the stroke. He was like this. So this has made it even worse. But he's not someone who can give concise. When you listen to me, you know, and I had to learn to do this myself because, you know, completing thoughts. And sometimes I would not complete my thought or sentence. I still do it occasionally. But I did it all the time. And it made it hard for people to listen to my channel. Like you have to work on those things, right? I'd have to listen to my videos the way other people would listen to them. And so that's what this guy... I mean, he can't do it, right? So, like, when he talks, he's all over the place. And you can kind of assess what he's saying. You can take a guess at what he's trying to say. But, you know, language is there for you to express what's going on inside and communicate to other people, you know, what your thoughts are on or, or what's going on or tell them a story, you know, and, like, he can't even do it, right? Like, he can't even fucking, you know, express himself in a way where you know what he's trying to say to you. And so if he can't hear what you're saying and he can't express what he's saying, then, you know, what is this guy? Like, what is he worth, right? I mean, he's really kind of a person that should be in an institution. Uh, and I wasn't working at the kind of capacity that was necessary. Uh, and that's, uh, we had to run up to... You mean the you were worse than this? <laughs> like it was worse? Uh, uh, the 15th of August decided if we're going to stay in that because there's a lot riding on that. And you were also competing against Dr. Oz, which was weird. You know, this guy... It was weird, like Dr. Oz. Like how, like, how bad is that motherfucker? I mean, think about what a loser Dr. Oz is. Like, this is the guy who wiped the floor with you. Who's a celebrity doctor who's at least a little shady. Uh... No, it it, uh, it it necessarily was the the yeah. I, I think uh, I you know so we were talking about captioning earlier right now, and I, uh, I I think we're having an issue with some of the 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 captioning right now here. Is it not showing up? Uh, yeah, there, I think there's a there's a little bit of a delay. Well, maybe it's the way I said shady. Yeah, he's a little shady. Like yeah. he he had been in trouble for talking about miracle diet remedies that weren't miracles at all and he, I believe he yeah. got brought in front of Congress so it was a little odd that that guy was running for Senate at all was he from Pennsylvania yeah well uh, doctor doc Jesus Christ he said shady in a way so that means he's got to talk in a way where there's no chance that the word will be messed up I mean the whole thing everything's voice to text for this guy um, I'm going to stop here this is where I got to in the video where he said there's a technical glitch out. Um, we'll just let him complete his thought about Dr. Raz here. Dr. Raz, yeah, I, I think I think from a technology, I think we have to address the... the, the oh, is it messing up right now? Yeah, I, I think the captioning. Uh, the, the captioning's running a little bit behind on okay. here. Okay. So can we make some technological... Stop and have yeah. her sure. fix it. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll have her come fix it. Yeah, okay. We'll pause here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that. That was the moment. Um, you know... The guy can't fucking function. And he's a senator. And what more information do you need? Like, he got elected by the state that's going to probably decide this presidency with Trump. And so they elected this guy. Like, the media permitted it, and the Democratic Party allowed it, and the Republicans couldn't cough up a candidate that could beat him. You know, when it's a swing state where it often goes Republican, there's plenty of Republican voters because of Trump and the, whatever's going on with Trump and the dislike for Trump. And now this is the state where Trump pulls off his fake, you know, ketchup gate. And I mean, it's just all there for you to see and you just don't want to see it. I mean, I'm going to, unless they 
don't let me post this. If it, they didn't demonetize this, I'm going to still run it because it's that important to what I'm saying. Um, we'll see what happens. But anyways, fuck. Like, fuck. It's so bad. Okay, so the point of this video and my election coverage in general is that this is a horrible, uh, you know, incomprehensibly bad set of candidates and political parties and media and you know it's not that like it's just not okay oh this isn't okay this is subpar this isn't good it's horrible right that these two candidates are so bad and the campaigns are so bad everything's so fake and our situation is like so dire right <laughs> you know when I grew up and, you know, there's all this kind of doomsday stuff. There's always that kind of stuff, right? There's always the end of the world stuff. There's always been signs of our society crumbling because it's been getting worse. In terms of people, have been getting worse my entire life and even before I was born. You know, people have been degraded more and more by the modern-day system. It hasn't made people better. It's made people worse. It's made our lifestyles better. It's made, you know, all of the things that we enjoy better. But it hasn't made us better like we're worse we're weaker and you can see it like psychologically health wise you know just strength and and character and our connection to god and our families and everything that every defining characteristic of what you would consider health has gotten worse right and so you know but when i was um my whole life didn't really matter if reagan or carter got elected or you know, Bob Dole or Clinton or whoever it was. Like, Bob Dole wasn't... They weren't saying Bob Dole was going to destroy the country, right? These kind of various candidates they'd have over the years and the campaigns and all of it. But now we're openly talking about apocalypse. Everything looks like it's imploding. You know, we're on the verge of World War Three. all these things. And people just suck. I mean, that's the worst part. The, when there's mor moral breakdown, there's all this kind of breakdown, right? And it's just so degraded and fake. So let me just give you some examples here. So this is MSNBC, and they decide to talk about this. This is, you know, McCaskill or whatever name, former senator. They have real political people and, and political analysts, and this is who they decide to focus on. Taking it down for a lot of folks. Um, and let's take, it to, let's take a quick listen to her. Uh, in, in Milwaukee talking about the con. This dude used to be the head of the Republican Party. He was chair of the, the RNC. Of Donald, uh, by Donald Trump. Tomorrow, he'll be conning you out of your health care rights. And that's a fact. I want you to hear that again. Today, he's hustling you with the, oh, buy my sneakers. Tomorrow but that's a fact. He'll be conning you out of your health care rights. That's a fact. And so this, you know, they're always talking about Donald Trump's lies. And she just said that he'll be conning you out of your health care rights, which isn't even a sentence. That can't be a fact because it can't fucking exist, right? You don't have health care rights. <laughs> you have a health care system. You have Obamacare. And he could be conning you out of Obamacare, but he's not saying that. What he says said about it, he's going to keep it. Right, because he said, if we come up with something better, we'll get rid of it. But they're not going to come up with something better because the insurance companies aren't going to let you do something to fix the system. That's what happened with Obamacare. And it isn't something that Trump really is campaigning on. And so what she said is blatantly false because, one, it can't exist, and two, she's dumb as fuck and doesn't understand anything. Tomorrow is going to be your health care rights. He's going to take it away from you. He's going to snatch it. Donald Trump He's going to snatch it. And like this is considered, you know, are you going to fact check Cardi B here? Are you going to have live fact checkers come on here and dispute her fucking gibberish? Right? Like, talks about how he has a concept of a plan, but America, the only concept of a plan he has is a plan to hustle you. Okay, concept of a plan means that he's going to stick with Obamacare. That's what that means. He didn't want to say that. He said, we have a concept of a plan. If they can get some, he said we can't get anything passed. Anyway, they were lucky to get the first thing passed. That's not something that he's going to meddle with at all. 
And so she's reading this, and what does that even mean, right? Like your health care rights? Obamacare sucks, right? For most people, the insurance pre- premiums are are brutal, and you get shit for coverage, and it's gotten worse over the years, right? The initial government funding has, you know, this was a big um, win for the insurance companies. You got to get rid of the insurance companies if you want to fix health care. Insurance is the worst part of it, right? But, uh, you know, it's like just, it's silly, and there's showing her like she's quality, right? Like she's smart and has something to say. And that's been Donald Trump's M.O. from back in the day in the 1980s in New York. I mean, it's always about the hustle. And to sort of... Boy, she nailed it. She just cut through with her street sense in her iPhone, reading her message off her iPhone. Boy, she's brilliant. Like, that's not fucking news. Like, this is how desperate you are. You're bringing Cardi B in there like this is like she's a serious person. Like who would even put her up on stage? Like, <laughs> you know, like get the fuck out of here. Like what are you doing? So this is spectacular. Fix the mic. Uh huh. You gotta be kidding. Do you want to see me knock the hell out of people backstage? You want to see me? Okay, so this is you can't do this shit, right? So Trump, it says here, Trump will fix it. So first of all, he's completely fucked himself because he can't get even a working mic. And the people who are running the event, they're probably trying to fix it. Like he has no idea how to, you know, he just goes there and expects everything to be perfect. And everyone does their job and everything works out perfect. But things glitch out. You know, my mic's glitch it out today. For whatever reason, there's interference. You know, it could be in any number of things now with Wi-Fi and you know, this this is a, might be a, a Bluetooth mic because it's cordless, right? And who knows why his mic isn't working. But the rest of us have to deal with shit like that all the time. Things not working properly. And he says, let's beat the hell out of somebody. Like, who? Who are you going to beat the hell out of, right? It's just a nightmare, this guy. Knock the hell out of people backstage, you want to see me? These people who are working for you, this is how you treat your employees, your staff, the people putting on this event. You're going to go knock the hell out of somebody because the mic doesn't work? That's what you do? You beat your, you beat your slaves? My, my, my mic just flashed because it's having, having problems today. There's some kind of, you know, it just, there's interference. I have a Bluetooth mic, and some days it's worse than others. Like, it just happens. Shit like that happens, right? Things just don't work. Things glitch out. You don't go knock the hell out of somebody. You're going to knock the hell out of somebody. I don't mind if they want to come up a little forward or something, but it's a pretty stupid situation, but that's okay. I get so angry. I'm up here seething. I'm seething. I'm working my ass off with this stupid mic. You're seething because things just don't work right? You expect perfection? Like, yes, you're going to lead it light into somebody and fire somebody when no one even, you know, there's probably uh, a good explanation for why it's not working, right? But I don't want to knock the hell out of somebody. Like, it's all the things... We know about Trump stiffing his, you know, his people, right? Stiffing the people that work for him. You know, I, there was a, an interview with um, with uh, uh, that woman who busted the, um, I covered it by last video, the Hunter Biden story. And you know, she's, um, whatever her name is. Uh, and she's in her, being interviewed by Tucker Carlson. She's done all this research into the Biden family. And Tucker Carlson said that it was well known that Biden, Biden would stiff like the guy who cut his lawn and all these people. They wouldn't pay. Which, you know, it was Tucker Carlson. He's a Trump guy. Maybe that's true. I could believe that to be true. And Trump did the same thing, right? So what the hell are you voting for? Like these people are uh, Miranda, whatever her name is, was the, the reporter. And, you know, what, what are we voting for? Why would you vote? Like there's, there's nothing here to vote for. Like, this guy has a little glitch in his mic, and he's saying shit. And it's not only, like, he's failing in his job. Trump will fix it. He's failing in his job because it's exactly the kind of thing that people disparage Trump about. That he thinks of himself as some little Lord Fauntleroy who's like a prince or a a king. And, like, you know, off with their head, the mic doesn't work. You know, like, what are you talking about? You're You're not a slave owner. And things break down. Like, just deal with it. I mean, my mic doesn't work. You know, like, freaking Jesus Christ, bro. You know. 
I'm blowing out my left arm. Now I'm going to blow out my right arm, and I'm blowing out my damn throat, too, because he's stupid people. Okay, so I, I hold my mic. You know, I make hours of content every day, and I'm holding my mic right here now. I hold my mic the whole time, right? This is, you know, I mean, this is what I have to do. I could put it on a stand, but, you know, I have to keep it the same amount of distance from my face. It's just like a thing. And I'm blowing out your arm like it just, you know, like he's got to hold the mic close to him because it's not picking up so much, and he's he's having to spaz about it. His mic is fine. He just has to hold it a little bit closer to his mouth. I have to hold my mic. I'm gonna blow out my arm. It's so heavy. My tiny little hands. I'll make you a deal. Pretend you're listening to it perfectly, and I'll come back and do another one, okay? With a decent... Okay. He's having one of those fits, like, you know, the the hammer guy. Like, these people are so... You know, they're, like, they're, chi they're children, right? It's so stupid. And, you know, the only thing I ask for... I don't care about lighting. I don't care about teleprompter. Again, this is not what you're supposed to be doing here whining about the mic right people have real fucking problems bro you have to hold your mic the whole time well it's incredibly difficult i guess it's even on a cord i don't know what the problem is with the mic but you know there's just you know things like this we all know we all have computer glitch outs there's things there's technical difficulties like there's things that happen it happens to people who are performing on stage and you know it sucks for them to be out there when everything isn't working but when it is working are you thanking everybody for doing a good job no, you just take it for granted. And then you realize, oh, this these things aren't guaranteed. Sometimes you got to fucking adjust and, and deal with a difficult situation. But he keeps on going on about it. I'm just going to say, never read the damn things anyway. By the way, isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need a frickin' teleprompter? That whines about his mic. Yeah, but you say dumb, crazy shit, though. <laughs> like, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> But I don't ask for much. I don't ask for much. Just gold seated toilet and blue M and M's, and you know, I just you know the normal things. I don't ask for much. The only thing I ask for is a good mic. And this is the second time today that this happened. So now I'm having a little tantrum on the mic. So now, if I was in, if I were the president, and you know, like a dopey guy like this, Kelly, the guy's a total moron and that happened I'd fire him and everybody would say gee I'm such a bad person you're not bad you fire people when for instance yeah but you know we don't know exactly what happened with the sound guy here like you would just fire him because it you know you got up there and the mic wasn't working properly and so you just fire him and like you know if we had that same kind of standard for you you'd be in jail like the rest of these motherfuckers right I mean, if we all were completely 100% accountable for every little failure or thing went on during your watch certainly you, you've committed crimes as has every one of these other politicians and you know what about your fucking six bankruptcies and stiffing people and all the bullshit you've pulled over your life like he's just a piece of shit or you're faking that you got shot in the fucking ear you piece of shit right you know like i'm gonna have a tantrum over my mic and i'm gonna talk about like he's still going on this is he's two minutes in here the generals that destroyed us in Afghanistan. Every one of them should have been fired. Should have been fired. Hello? Hello? I don't think so. Hello? Is that better? Is that better? That's terrible. Is that better back there? Is that yes or no? Huh? What crap. The only <laughs> this is him. This is what Trump is, like a whining piece of shit. The only thing I ask for is a mic. You don't have to give me... I don't even need a stage. I don't give a damn. Give me a good mic. And I went through two of these today. And it knocks the hell out of your throat. But so far, I'm doing okay, right? Okay. Is that better? Yeah. And did you notice I also... I came in today, I said, uh, 
And you know, this is after four of these things. I've been in all fairness. I mean, I'm a human being, right? I'm a human being, for Christ's sakes. I mean, I gotta go knock the hell out of somebody. Right? I come in, and here's the problem. Oh my God! You look at him. He's blowing the mic here. <laughs> look at him. He's such a moron. Look at him. He's, what does this look like? First, he looks like he's working. Yeah, working, Trump. Way too low. Way too low. So I walk in. I said, "Shit, there's nothing worse than I walk in like this and I'm." Ben, did you notice? I was bending over like this. Hello. And then everybody says, is there something wrong with his back? What the hell is wrong with that thing? They're saying, he's cognitively impaired and physically impaired. There's something wrong with them all because I have guys that are stupid back there. They're stupid. They're stupid because they can't get the mic to work, right? I mean, who knows what the story is? But him pitching a fit and acting this way, it's a couple of days out in front of the election. It's a horrible look. Like, just... Keep it together, bro. All right. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, right? I don't know. Just, like, fucking do your job and stop fucking whining about it, right? I mean, it's going to be whatever it is. What a shame. But we're going to come back. I'm going to give you a free performance back in that corner. you got a bad area back there. What do you mean? They're paying for it? What do you mean a free performance? They, you sell tickets to this thing? Okay, so then Kamala fuckhead Harris. You know... Saturday Night Live finally set in after Joe Biden admitted he was senile after years of everybody knowing it. And so SNL accused of ripping off Trump's 2015 skit with Fallon for Kamala Harris' surprise appearance. And so this is uh, Maya Rudolph talking to Kamala Harris in the mirror. And they look a little bit alike, actually. But she can't. She doesn't act like Kamala. She's not a good impressionist. And there they are there, right? But here is Jimmy Fallon and Trump doing this in 2015 when Trump ran. And, you know, it's the same network, and they ran, they ripped off this sketch. Like, how much of Trump's shit has he ripped off already? Like, they, they don't have any of their own stuff. Either it's, oh, we hate Trump and Trump sucks, or they're stealing Trump's bits or his, you know, his talking points. Like, it's bizarre. Like, Trump does suck. And so you guys either have to parish, parasite off of him because he does suck and everything that Trump does is horrible or you steal his stuff at least Trump is making up his own stuff or whatever this was a Fallon thing I, was, I guess it was Jimmy Fallon's idea but Jesus right like <laughs> are you getting a theme here here's part of the sketch Her, her laugh, they covered up her signature laugh with the the crowd. Like, why are you laughing? It's not funny. Nothing funny's happened. <laughs> Woo! Woo, they're laughing! Woo! Woo! So how could you be that excited about Kamala Harris? It goes on another two minutes. And then they start talking here. Sister. <laughs> you and me both, sister. She asked what it's like to run as the kind of ethnic background that Kamala Harris has. And she was like, I wish I could talk to somebody who was in a similar situation as a woman from these various ethnic backgrounds. And then she looks at herself and talks in the mirror. It is nice to see you, Kamala. It is nice to see you, Kamala. And I'm just here to remind you, you got this. Because you can do something you're... You, you got it. You got this. I'm just here because this is supposed to be a comedy show. This is the cold open. You got this, Kamala. Kamala, you got this. You got this. ...and cannot do. You can open doors. <laughs> so that's Trump and the garbage thing. That he couldn't get the door open for the garbage truck, right? Which is pretty funny. I covered that. Was it in this video or the last one? I guess in the last one. Um... You know, like just again you see in a theme here like it's not just there's they're a little bit bad they're a little bit sucky 
and we're in an okay time, right? You know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there was no thought. I mean, people, there's fringe people who think it's always the apocalypse, right? You know, and, and we already were in a downward trending, but it wasn't the end of the world and nothing was going to, you know, the end of America. And so the election really didn't matter all that much. Little small differences, you know, different, you know, some things being uh, focused on, others not, right? You know, affecting some people, but not everybody, you know, in, in different ways and sometimes not affecting anybody at all. But now you have two candidates that both suck at a time where you would need somebody great. And even if you had somebody great, you would need a whole, you know, country of great people and leaders. Like, we're all not up to what we need to do. Like, all of us, the changes we need to, to, to um, you know, to, uh, to embrace is something beyond almost every person. Never mind the leadership and the, you know, the corruption and the power structure and the people who run the corporations. They're all just... You know, ghouls and zombies and vampires you know they're all the the worst type of broken defeated uh bankrupt people who are mentally ill and incompetent of of making the right decisions and so that's you know that's America right now <laughs> Woo. I see what you did there like to a garbage truck right <laughs> <laughs> Like that, do I? Do I? <laughs> oh, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Your laugh sucks. And everything sucks. And no, you, my real laugh, that's not how she laughs. It's like not a good impression. And so, like, this is just 100% suck. Okay, so I should have just showed you this part. You know, they copyright stuff here on MS, uh, NBC. But they do a bunch of um, rhymes here of things that rhyme with Kamala. With a cool new step mamala. <laughs> Kick back in our pajamas and watch a rom Kamala. <laughs> like legally blondela. <laughs> and start decorating for Christmas. Follow la la la. <laughs> yeah, that was the end of it. Like it went on forever. Like just that was your jokes. You guys got joke fucking writers there? You know, you're an iconic comedy, uh, political satire, and you came up with fucking shit that rhymes with Kamala. Fa la 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 la, right? Legally blondela. Like, that was your fucking lines and jokes. I mean, pathetic of Londola. Like, Jesus fuck. Like, <laughs> it's horrible. So, this is a quality ad for the dopes that would watch Trump's you know would vote for trump it's a you know it's a and for men like they're pitching for men here trump put out this ad and there's another ad that's basically a similar ad that's put out by make america great again inc which i guess is working for or with trump because it's the same narrator okay so the morons who made this video first i thought it got copyrighted because it was a song so i redid it and i just was showing the pictures now, this is a promotional ad, an ad they want to get out a couple of days before the election. I'm going to post this either Monday or Tuesday, so I'm giving them free advertising. And they copyrighted the thing like assholes. You know, when anything's promotional, whether it's a trailer or something, a political ad, you want as many people to use as much of it as possible, right? Even if they are mocking it or using it, you know, talking about it in a bad way, you're getting your message out there. But these morons copyrighted my video. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that gets you, you know, it's the kind of stupidity that costs you elections, right? And so um, they show a bunch of stuff that, you know, I kind of might agree with. Some of you guys might agree with. Trumpers would agree with. They get the problem kind of right. But then at the end of the video, they show you this stuff with Trump. They show you this bullshit thing with his maxi pad for his ear. When we get knocked down, we don't stay down. We get back up, right? This is the uh, <laughs> bullshit thing with Trump. We fight. We fight. We fight. I'm done. OJ Trump, and I approve this message. See, you know, it ends with this bullshit thing here, right? We fight. It ends with this bullshit thing here. Like, you know, he made solid points of things that people are upset about, things that are legitimate, you know, things that can be tied to Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. 
But then he said the solution is this clown and his fucking bullshit fake shot in the ear thing, right? And so, you know, it's pathetic. Like, it's just become something that's pathetic because it is, right? <laughs> like, cause this, isn't, this isn't truth. You know, if your answer is a bullshit WWE type of thing, then, you know, he's, he's scamming you. So they got the problems right for people. I mean, there's a bigger problems and there's, you know, a more a deeper way to look at these things on a spiritual level. But, you know, the solution is Trump and this bullshit thing that he's done and, and just a staged thing and faking. You can't fake your way to, to avoid an apocalypse, right? You can't flim flam your way out of avoiding the collapse of a system, right? There's a whole, you know, this is like end days type of stuff. And he's got this fake ketchup fucking on his fucking fat face and all that fucking... Okay, so then there's this. Um, this is... Uh, well, you'll see it. This is another ad that's done by Make America Great Again. What makes America great? When we're down, we rise. Okay, so this kind of bullshit, right? This, um, you know, this event. Remember this event? Down, we rise. We rise. We fix the broken. We, we fix the broken. Heal the hurt. We Except when it's a microphone. We just sit there and whine like a little bitch. Rescue the lost. There's no challenge too big for the American. The storm in Normandy, the beaches of Normandy, right? Where it's brutal. I mean, just a, a bloodbath. Spirit. Today, our border, our economy, and our safety are crumbling. Crumbling. After four years, Kamala Harris made us less secure. She made us less secure, Kamala Harris. She's from blame. Releasing millions of illegal immigrants into our towns. We're less safe. Violent crime is rising. And we're less stable. Paying more and getting further behind. Kamala Harris broke it. She broke it. But President Trump will fix it. He'll fix it. Together, we'll end the high cost, crime, and chaos. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in, we will never give up, we will never back down, and we will never, ever surrender. This well, you could surrender to God, like that would be good, right? Our time. This is our time, and this is our leader. That's our leader. Look at him. Look at that fucking leader right there. He will fix it. He'll fix it. President Donald J. Trump. Make America Great Again, Inc. is responsible for the content of this advertising. <laughs> make America Great, Great, Make America, Inc. Make America Great Again, Inc. Okay, so some clown released hundreds of hours of Jeffrey Epstein's tapes. Right, you know, a couple days before the election. Because they want to tie Trump to Epstein. And Trump has legitimate ties to Epstein. But so does all the fuck, everybody, right? He donated to any, everybody who's a part of these, all these greasy... And if it isn't Epstein, it's a scumbag just like him. They're all complicit. And this is another, oh, we're just fucked, not that one side's better than the other. But this is what Jeffrey Epstein had to say about Trump. So how, how do you know this? I was Donald's closest friend for 10 years. So I need the I need the um, the Donald. Just give me Donald. Where's it? But as you probably know, he had a scalp reduction. You see that? Maybe the same. <laughs> you the, the dope on Trump is he's got male body and baldness. <laughs> this is your big male body more than you all have. He had his office, as you know, he, he made that. He used to be on the phone with that fake PR person. Mm -hmm. but, but, I was kind of funny. I was sitting there listening to the guys from the Post Club, and I would, would say, you know, Don, yeah, he's a great guy. You know, I loved working with him. <laughs> and I sit there, going, this is just amazing. And he'd say, Michael, come on, let's go to the office. And he'd say, Tell me, what's it like to be like there? You say, well, uh, you know, do you like having sex with your wife? How often do they? You say, it's great. How, seriously, Michael, how often do we have sex with you? I mean, don't you want the truck? We can, you and I can go up, you know, upstairs or tomorrow, come over. There's this girl's coming in from Los Angeles, part of the 
or Hawaiian traffic cuts. Uh, so he's saying Trump's pimping out these girls. So come on with you, God. You're going to have a great time. I promise you, Michael, you know, it's just me and you. You're going to have a great time. Be up here at 3 o'clock with the process. The whole time, Victoria's been on the phone. Listen, he said it up. Because he wants to f story. So he has you on, because as the and boy conversation, Get a new mic in here, so they'll slap somebody around. <laughs> okay, we get the idea. So they release this, you know, like this makes a fucking difference. Like we, like people don't already know Trump's a scumbag. Chloe Grace Moritz comes out as gay woman while endorsing Kamala Harris for president. And so, you know, this girl, this actress. There's Kamala, you know who she is. Um... Here is, oh, that's the wrong one. Here's her Instagram post. We go to this thing here. Government then and now, 2020. Take the boop or we will fire you. You will starve. You take your children, put you in camps and leave you to die without medical treatment. Nobody forced you. This is 2024. Um, but this is her post here. I voted early and I voted for Kamala Harris. There's been so much on the line this election. I believe the government has no right over my body as a woman and that decision over my body should come only from myself and my doctor. Except if it means the boop. Kamala Harris will protect that, that for us. I believe in the need for legal protections that protect the LBGTQ plus community as a gay woman. So she comes out as gay at the same time she's announcing this stuff for Kamala because you know it'll go viral now we need protection like, like you wouldn't hear this otherwise it would just be her endorsing Kamala another celebrity but the fact that she came out as gay now they're going to put it in you know articles like on page six um, you know the rest of it here and so um, that happened because what do we always say keep Kamala and carry on a lot <laughs> Woo! That was brilliant! Woo! It's so funny! Woo! We know each other so well, we even finished each other's belief in the promise of America! Wow. Just really bad. <laughs> like, horrible! Like, holy fuck horrible, right? <laughs> That's like, holy fuck horrible right there. Okay, so they showed a picture of Kamala Harris and her mom when she was a little kid. And she sent this message out. I love this country with all my heart, and I believe in its promise because I've lived it. She loves it with all of her heart. I grew up as a child of the civil rights movement. My parents would take me to marches when I was a toddler. Yeah, you remember that, do you? Like, you remember going to those marches when you were a toddler? <laughs> you have these vivid memories? Where crowds of people of all races, faiths, and walks of life came together for freedom and opportunity. I've lived the promise of America. I saw how hard my mother worked to give her daughters the same chances this country gave her. I was blessed to have the family by blood and family by love, who is still, because the family in love by love is the way she has a connection to the African American community. Family by love, who instilled in me the values of the community, compassion, faith, that have always defined our nation at our best. Who talks like that, right? It's just like nobody talks like that. No normal person talks like that. So she goes on with this bullshit, right? Um, you know, these are ads that this is from my YouTube feed. This was just there. They're pushing everything possible. <laughs> There's like all these ads on the, the games, football games, and all this stuff. So then Donald Trump posts this Donald J. Trump. No president has done more for farmers in the great state of Iowa than Donald J. Trump. <laughs> You're talking about yourself in the third person. In fact, it's not even close. All polls except for one have heavily skewed toward the Democrats by a Trump hater who called it totally wrong the last time, the last time, have me up by a lot. I love the farmers and they love me. They just, uh, the 
the just out immersion poll as me up by 10 points in Iowa. Thank you. Because there was a new poll in Iowa that said she was going to win Iowa out of the blue, which is a red state, and it wasn't even considered in play. And then these polls come out. You know, um, I'm going to see. We'll see what happens. And it looks like Trump is winning, but they're trying to say that Kamala's close, which means they're, they're going to try to steal it or they don't want Kamala Harris voters not to show up. I think there's a lot of Kamala Harris voters that aren't very passionate about her. So I think that's it, you know. But, you know, you Trumpers who think it's going to get better with Trump, it's going to get worse. I think Trump presidency will be slightly worse because they can blame Trump for everything, right? Everything that happens to America, the collapse of America. I mean, the collapse of America, I think, is within the next four years, there's going to be severe lifestyle and, you know, things that we all notice. Things were like, holy fuck, things have gotten bad. Things are way worse. Prices, inflation, all of it, right? Chaos, riots, maybe World War Three. I mean, all these things. And so, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, it, it's trending towards that, but, you know, hopefully there's a little bit of a reprieve. I don't know how we're going to get one with either of these two clowns. In terms of, you know, these guys aren't going to do it. It'll just be, you know, divine intervention, which I, you know, why would God buy <laughs> Okay, so um, one last dose of Gwen J. Walls. What? Yeah. And the next lady is Gwen Walls. Woo! Girl, a hog. There you go, Gwen. Doing a radio thing, and it started snowing there today. No way. So there are lots of reasons to be in Georgia. <laughs> you don't like the snow when you live in Minnesota? That's right, and good afternoon, Megan, and happy Halloween. Woo! Yeah. Is that your costume? Yes, yes it's right, yeah, and thank you, thank you so much. Um, for that introduction, um, LJ, and it's great to be with State Rep Miriam Paris. So she's putting on her teacher glasses. Thank you, Mary. Do we call you? There you go. All right, let's move forward here. I brought some of my great grandmother's cookies. She didn't make it; she's gone, you know. But her recipe that we make, you may have heard. Um, We're gonna show her. She's gonna show you her grandmother's cookies. It's ginger snaps. Spoiler alert. Um, that I bring cookies everywhere I go. I brought like 20 dozen on the plane, so I had enough for, uh, for Georgia. But I serve these in the Minnesota governor's residence to guests who come there. And then when we have dinners and things, before they go out into that cold Minnesota winter night, I serve them warm. Um, so they have a warm cookie to, to take with them. And I thought... She likes making cookies, right? She's got a lot of pent-up sexual energy because her husband's, you know... Batting for the other team. <laughs> what could I bring to people that would really say thank you or really be... Ginger snaps. It's fucking ginger snaps, Gwen. From our family to all of you. And so I brought you some cookies and we put a little Walls Harris thing on the bottom here. Um, yep. And so there they are. Um, Where are they? And I hope they're good. I hope they're good. One Saturday we made like 1,500 and now we ran out so we had to make them again. So... You're on batch two here. Um, it wasn't that many weeks ago when I was knocking on doors. Let's talk about, wait, you're moving on from the cookie thing way too early. And making phone calls in my home state of Minnesota. And then Tim got a different call from the vice president, Vice President Harris. And Who? I sure? And I kid you not, one of my first thoughts was, oh my stars, I have to have someone cover all my call shifts, right? <laughs> yeah, but ever since that time, I've been traveling all over this country to great and beautiful states, meeting people like you, knocking on doors in northern Michigan. I'm giving out cookies, sorry, let's move on here. The president said on Tuesday, we don't have to live like this. We can just turn the page on him. And we can turn the page to a new, forward-looking vision from Kamala. Turn the page, do it. And Tim. They both spent their entire careers fighting for middle-class families. Oh, they made her tamp down the turn the page thing. 
They cut off Dwayne Walls' nuts. Like the ones they grew up in. Their upbringing taught them the value of a hard day. So you know more turn the page? Unity economy. One She's got a little cold, a little nasal. This She's a little bit low energy. They've, 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 they've clipped her wings. Fly, so Gwen, fly. And I'm excited to grab a clipboard and pinch in too. So. Okay, so they've toned her down. Like, they've toned down the crazy. And she's, they've medicated her. <laughs> Pretty sure they've medicated Gwen Walls. So here's Gwen Walls and Jilly Jill. They could play each other, right? They could look in the mirror and pretend to be, you know, the Kamala sketch. But here they are. Yes, they are. But more than that, they are fired up for a new way forward. For nine long years, we have been suffering through the Trump show. Boom, she's a little bit angry, but still medicated. Sowing chaos and division, lying right to our faces. Right to our fucking faces. And always, always, always making everything about himself. Exactly. And You guys are always making it everything about himself as well. Hasn't it been exhausting? It's exhausting, yes. Glenn. Just tell, turn the page, Gwen. And it's abundantly clear. Trump, Vance, and the MAGA Republicans are not fighting for us. Who are they fighting for? They Who's are fighting it? for themselves. Yeah. And what A couple of teachers here. They're offering with that Project 2025 agenda. No one's asking for it. Yeah, because they didn't, they didn't write it because it hurts them. I don't know about you, but I subscribe to hope, not hate. Exactly. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a hoper. I'm not a hater. Let's see if she does. She's been a little bit here. Let's see if she's there. And that's how we do this together. Wait, let's go back. Me too. We are right here with you, all of us. And so many Americans all across this country are with you, Michigan, too. Okay, let's Me see. Me, too. Whether to offer advice, join one of my classes, or campaigning side by side. Her power as an educator She's extends... introducing Jilly Jill. Again, low energy. They've, they've clipped her nuts. They've medicated her. I don't even know if she even did the turn the page thing here. Okay, so this is on Tim Wall's official page. Hi, this is Gwen Walls, and I'm here making cookies from the campaign trail. Boom, cookies from the campaign trail with Gwen Walls. That's the name of this video. She's got molasses there. When I go to field offices, I bring my great grandma's uh, ginger snap cookies. Ginger on snap cookies, Gwen campaign trail we can't always be as exact as we might be in our own kitchens i think if you get a little more ginger because measuring spoons don't work the same there heck it's the name i've already preheated my oven i am going to mix these together before i start with the ingredients where i have to use my mixer you know you, you have a campaign mixer the mixer is a hand mixer and i usually just throw that in my suitcase good for, good for you Greg. So you know what? They said, all right, Gwen, that turn the page thing was a fucking disaster. When you said that turn the page thing, everyone mocked it. You look like a crazy person. What else you got? I don't know. My grandmother's ginger snap cookie recipes. Yes, let's go with fucking that. Make some cookies, Gwen. Stop with the turn the page thing and just be a cookie maker. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need a good mixer. I'm going to put this mixture off to the side here. You do that, Gwen. He's made trays for all the people in the neighborhood with all of our favorite snacks and cookies. It looks like lard you just put in there. Is that fucking lard? That's some Crisco shit you put in there? You're eating that stuff? No wonder Tim's so out of shape. On and then the kids would deliver them. My great grandmother lived through the depression and all kinds of really challenging things. Wasted one ounce of sugar because she always remembered that they were short on sugar and short on these. some of these really... Exactly. Let's bring back the Great Depression because there's nothing more inspiring than talking about your grandmother's depression days. What kind of medication do you want, Greg? 
basic but spectacular ingredients. And I'm gonna put an egg in here. Tim's Aunt Kathy has lots of chickens on her farm in Nebraska, and she sends us dozens and dozens of eggs. And yeah, the, those are those crappy farm-based eggs, and there's, does she, 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 she put, look, does she put a thing on it? Does she put, is that her, her signature thing that she put on the egg? Eggs. And then I'm gonna put molasses. My great grandma was making these all the time, but I know for sure on Sunday afternoons we'd have treats at, at her house. It smells like fall to me. Fail that or fall? Molasses and that nutmeg and, and all of that smells just so very good. So good, it smells great. Sugar right here. Some sugars. I'm gonna take a little piece of this. Yes, you are. As a little girl, I remember having these cookies and uh, loving them. Now, um, my daughter Hope, Hope or Girl Little Pearl, is gonna help us. Hope or Girl Little Pearl. <laughs> and let me see that. Oh, that's pretty good. Yesterday, just as I was getting ready to bake, we had to go um, to an event. So what happened to Hope or Girl Little Pearl? I ended up putting my cookies um, that were already on my trays, covering them with wrap and putting them in the refrigerator. Okay, so I'm going to put these cookies. Well, what did that like fucking have to do with anything, Gwen? Like, is that the Prozac talking? What's up? He's in the oven. When we were making the cookies, I mentioned that I like to use really farm fresh eggs. You can try to add those extra ingredients that are regional and flavorful. And I think exactly that regional eggs. They come from your sister in Nebraska, your sister-in-law. Makes it even more special. I'm going to pull these out. They're not quite done. And I'm going to sprinkle them with the little extra sugar, which is the- Because, you know, diabetes. Love that you're putting in these two. A little love here for Hope. A little love here for Gus. A little love here for Tim, because they'll have to try a cookie before I take them. Tim's getting the a little love from one of his interns right now. <laughs> The field office. <laughs> that sugar isn't really love, it's it's diabetes. He's back in just for a couple minutes. They smell so good. Here we have cookies that are done. If you break a few, then that can be your treat for dinner because these are going to a field office where people are Exactly, we're real important people. We get the fucking we give the broken cookies to our miserable kids. Working really hard and long hours. I want to make sure they have a little extra love. I think I like a mix of these sugars because it kind of sparkles a little bit. And who Give them a little extra love, a little, you know, walking diabetes. Who doesn't like sparkles? Who doesn't like sparkles? Mm. What do you think, Hope? Good. Good? I hope you'll have time to make some of these uh, on your own at home. And let's win. Let's win. One cookie at a time, Gwen. Fucking, you're doing it, Gwen. Okay, so this is the talk, which I thought was only women, but I guess this dude's on it. And maybe our next second lady of the United States. Please welcome the wife of Democratic Vice Presidential nominee, Tim Walls, Mrs. Gwen Walls. Looks like, look at her, go Gwen. Where's your, where's your fucking cookies, Gwen? Look at this, right? How old is Gwen? She looks like she's freaking. Give her the give her the good big seat here. She's a tiny person. She's not like the big burly bear man that Tim's used to. <laughs> Your first talk show. My first one. Yeah, Mrs. Walls, thank first you. First one. Thank yeah, you so, so much. you all have to help me out a little bit. This is a learning experience, and you all help me out. Okay. Right? Yeah. Turn the page, Gwen. We got you. We got, we got you. Thank you. We got you, Gwen. Thank you. How are you feeling now with just six days to go until the election? I mean, you're straight off the campaign trail. Right? You know, I've been making lots and lots of cookies. I, my grandmother's recipe, and I sprinkle a little bit of love that I call it, like, it's really sugar on top of it. Uh, that, and I turn the page a lot. So, yeah, six days. It's straight off. It has been really exciting yeah. um, all over this country, but I am feeling 
great, optimistic, hopeful. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. all of it. Thank you. Uh, we want to ask your opinion on something because yeah. we talked about. I know that even your husband has been sometimes mocked. You know, getting on his hands and knees and and barking like a dog while another man sits on top of him and rides him like a horse. Mocked for wearing a lot of his plaid shirts. <laughs> even President Obama teased him about it. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, the seats just a plaid shirt guy and kind of guy. Oh well, my gosh, Paul he wears it very well. The lumberjack shirt. What do you think, though, about the topic we were talking about? A guy, a guy was being called out by his girlfriend for being too controlling, or she, the guy called the girlfriend too controlling. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm just gonna say this: I only fight battles I can win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her go! Look at her, Gwen, dropping some, some, some Minnesota knowledge on these guys. You're not winning that one, huh? Uh, that, that's <laughs> all I'm saying. So a plaid shirt, shirt or Crocs are okay on a date. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. Yeah. I only fight battles I can win. Yeah, yeah I'm just, you know, so turn the page. <laughs> Stick into it. Yes. Oh. All right. Yeah. But uh, you and Governor Wall celebrated your 30th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Woo! Woo! So so how did you meet? Is it true you didn't let him kiss you on the first date? Uh, you, you know, I'm an English teacher, and yeah. English teachers have policies. Oh. Yeah, right? We have, po we have policies. Yes, we do. We turn the page. Policies. Okay. And so I just felt like that's a really, you know, good policy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a really good policy. So, so, I, so I gave him a hand and said good night. I, uh, I put on a Brad Pitt mask. <laughs> <laughs> We met, we met teaching um, in Nebraska. He oh. was teaching. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Look at this cuties. Look at these two cute couple, this cute couple and their bizarre hairdos. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's at the prom. The theme was Egypt. Oh, okay. Can you see the pyramid thing? Oh, exactly. Yeah. She looks yeah. like yeah. But, Cleopatra um, we there teaching. with a bouffant hairdo. And in fact, the school was short on space and short on money. And so they put us both in the choir room and put a divider right down the middle. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this divider was not a thick divider. It was like a, a, th a one thin one. Uh, yeah. One of the thin ones. the big thick ones that, you know, I mean, this, this was as thin as could be. So I could hear what was going on in that classroom, and he, he could hear. Um, and we knew each other, um, but we shared a classroom. Yeah. And the first thing I loved about him um, was how he taught, um, yeah. because yeah, that's yeah, you know, he's just so he's such such a good teacher. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you knew it. I, I knew it. I knew that we shared um, a vision and our our values yeah. about education. Okay, let's wrap this thing up. Gwen Walls is here. We go here. Is it um, infertility treatment? Mm -hmm. I I was stunned. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought no one should have anyone make decisions about if, when, or how they want to start a family. Damn. Exactly. This is a Donald Trump. Like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, yeah. Yeah. that was yeah. our decision. Yeah. That's that our, was decision. our decision. That's right? right? And, and it was so hard, but so worth it. And, you know, our daughter's name is Hope. Yeah, and yeah exactly. Hope. For that, for a very good reason, mm -hmm. and I always say it's a good thing we didn't name our patients. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> but look at that! Look at those! Look at this motley crew! <laughs> look at this dude here with <laughs> this dude. This uh, we named her Hope because yeah. it's such a powerful name. Uh, yeah. yeah, right, Amen. and a powerful word, Amen. and it tells the story. Amen. So I, we have a real clear choice. Who is it between who? In this election, mm -hmm. and a real clear choice about whether we trust women or not. And Tim and Kamala trust women to make decisions. Yeah, right. yeah I could go, yup, 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 go ahead. Boy, where's the cookies, buddy? You didn't promise cookies. You get a cookie, and you get a cookie, and you get a cookie. I thought you were going, oh, come on, Gwen. All right, they definitely medicated her. It's kind of sad. But, you know, it's the end for her one way or another, because she'll disappear her as soon as the election's over, whether Kamala wins or not. Okay, so you get the theme here. Now, all politicians since I've been alive were just, they didn't act normally. They said shit that nobody else says, 
And when the people do say stuff like that, they're just posing and faking. And, you know, it's weird to be a patriot, like this kind of a patriot, right? You can believe in your country. You can have some, you know, whatever it is in your country, but you have to love all of it. You love something, you love all of it. Like, just don't deny the parts that that kind of love isn't love, right? All the bad shit about America, and there's lots of it. And so people who are aware that America is complex and has a complex history and abuse in the history and these things, you know, you can't be that kind of, I love America, patriot, you know, all these things. Because America isn't great. Like, America is complex. Just like people are complex. You have darkness, you have light, you have good, you have bad inside you, all these things. And so politicians are just, you know, they're always a little bit... um flim flam man scam artist right shills magic potion salesman these kind of things and so you know that's always been the case but now it's just so degraded everything's so degraded like i mean look at what i covered here and there's all the stuff that they put out it's so subpar it's you know beyond subpar it's horrible it's just horribly bad it's embarrassing it's an embarrassment to humanity it's not like the best we have to offer it's the worst the lies, the stupidity, the weirdness, the goofiness, the degradedness, the low consciousness, the stu- you know, all of it. Did I say stupid? I can't say stupid enough. And so there's no hope here. Like, this isn't hopeful. Like, it's just there's nothing there to, to take away from. Like, you can, they can name the problems. They can name the bad stuff, bad stuff the other people are doing, or they can name the problems with America right now. But nobody has a real solution. There's not a real solution out there. And so, you know, people can agree or disagree, oh, abortion's a horrible thing, or a woman should have a right to choose. And they can say they're going to change that. But that ain't going to bring America back. It's not going to make America great again or anything like that. It's not going to change anything. And so people have to be better. Like, we're going in the wrong fucking direction. People are going in the wrong direction. And this is all the evidence, right? This is not all the evidence. This is the evidence, uh, overwhelming evidence, and there's so much more out there. Anyways, um, I'll cover more of the election as we move forward. Only spirituality will save this world. It's paramount, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.